A very good afternoon and welcome to the coverage of Bath City against Dulwich Hamlet. I'm Michael Powell and alongside me this afternoon is Joe Ackham. The Romans made it back to back league wins on Tuesday and will be looking to make it a hat trick of victories against newly promoted Hamlet this afternoon. Yeah, the two sides are out beneath us here at Twitton Park, so I'll give you to a run through of those two sides unchanged for Bar City from that 3-0 victory on Tuesday so it's Ryan Clark in goal a back four of Joe Raines Robbie Cundy Jack Batten and captain Anthony Straker James Morton Sean Rigg and Adam Mann the midfield trio with Ross Stern and Andy Watkins either side of Ryan Brunt it's Matt Richards Frankie Artis John Mills Dan Ball and Kieran Hodges once again on the bench for Dulwich Hamlet one change for them from Monday evening which saw them drew two all at Chelmsford that's Gavin Tomlin coming in for Jay May. So it's Preston Edwards in goal. Then across the back, Quay Taylor, Sanchez Ming, Magnus Okawungay, and Daniel Papo. Remainder of their team, Ibrahim Cargo, Nairon Kunis, Ashley Carew, Gavin Tomlin, Dominic Vose, and Anthony Cook. Tamashe Abrahams, Nathan Ferguson, Jay May, Walter Figueroa. Dippo Akinyemi making up the Dulwich substitute bench. As I said, two teams are beneath us here, just about ready for kickoff on time at Curtin Park. Will be the hosts who get us underway in the usual black and white stripes, black shorts, and white stops, kicking towards the Bristol end in this first half. For those of you who are familiar with the Curtin geography, as Rig goes back to Morton, there's a diagonal ball early but headed away by Anthony Cook Dominic Vos and then looks to play left back in again he's done well gets the ball inside the area but the offside flag is up it referee blew his whistle I think a few of the Dulwich fans behind the goal were getting excited they might have got a penalty but the play is pulled back but that was a nice little interplay from the visitors on ball forward Brud does well to flick it on now he finds Stern he's fantastic tackled by Taylor Brunt will pick up the loose ball there now out to Rig on the left hand side. Crosses for his time, but overhits it. He tries to drive the cross goal. May in fact even be going for a shot from a tight angle. Sean Rig. Once again with the visitors here and Dominic Vokes. 30 yards out. It's a beautiful ball through to Clunis. Slides it past Ryan Clark. It's a fantastic start for the visitors. They've looked really calm and controlled in possession. And once again, Beautiful link-up play, and Nyron Clunis, who is one of the stalwarts on this side, gives them a deserved lead after seven and a half minutes. Oh, you really can't say it hasn't been coming. Dulwich have definitely had the best at the start of this game, and Bath have just looked really surprised about it. They haven't really dominated any of the ball, and very much well-deserved and well-taken goal by Nyron Clunis. Yeah, Nyron Clunis, who did score after four minutes at Chelmsford on Monday, scores after eight at Twerton Park on Saturday. Still with Tomlin on the halfway line, skips away from the challenger man, there's a collision between him and Rig, but Cook picks up the loose ball, then tries to dink a ball forward, which Batten does well to cut out, stop Clunis getting in again, he's really lively there, diminutive Hamlet player, but it's now with Straker, looks at Third ball over the top for Stern to go after. He will get there, gets the byline, Ross Stern. Looks to cut inside, still with him. Then tries to lay it across, but that goes loose. And Dutch Hammett can look to Brex. Ball into Clunis, nice little lay off to Vose. He's got Cook making a run down left hand side, then goes through the middle. Will he get there first? Joe Rain just about gets back to cover in front of Anthony Cook and then lets it go behind for a goal kick. Now nodded to Cook on the halfway line. Once again, looks to play it over the top. Clunis will get there in the head of Batten, who has to stick a tight and pull it away. Out for a corner kick, the first of the game. As it swings in from Carew, and it's captain. Not the one guy who got there, but can't keep his header down over the Bath City crossbar. Not too often we've said that about a visiting side at Twerton Park in the last 12 months, but now City can break through. Sean Rigg on the left-hand side, looks to cross it in. It's well defended, though, by... Oka one guy, Stern will pick up the loose ball though, and now to Morton. First time he's had a little bit of space, goes out to Stern on the left, he crossed in first time. It's good defending though. Goes back to captain Oka one guy, now forward to Tomlin on the halfway line, lays it off to Kunis and then spreads it out to the left to Sanchez Ming. 
Watkins has tracked back with him. 20 yards out on the Dulwich left. Plays it infield to Cook. Stabs it around the corner. Here's Bowes to the byline. Sk looks to take on Reigns. Still with Dominic Bowes. Then tries to beat the Bar City man again, but Reigns stuck to his task well to stop him. No, it's a really poor on that occasion by Papo, and now maybe a chance for Sean Rigg. Down the left hand side to the byline. It's tracked all the way by Carew, but still with the Bath City man. He scored the winner at Hampton last Saturday. Skips the bye, crosses in into the centre of the pitch, and then coming in as appears for handball. The referee says no. It wasn't too much distance between the header from Ross Stern and Daniel Papo, but infield to Straker, who's touched, lets him down. And a combination of Funis and Crew get the ball off the varsity captain, but he does then get it back. Now with Stern, brings in Reigns, 30 yards out, central. He's going to go for a long-range hit, it drifts wide of the Dulwich Hamlet goal. It's not the best hit from Joe Reigns, but he's done excellently well so far. It's a really tough afternoon for him, because Sanchez Ming has pushed really high up for Dulwich, and so he's got basically two men to mark at the same time. Back now to Funis, looking to take on Straker. Varsity captain sticks to his task well, and he's bought fine Stern, who then goes really for Brunt, I suspect. Well, the offside flag doesn't go up, he's onside here. Ryan Brunt up to the area, he's got that horribly wrong, completely miscues it, and hey, just like anyone else, he was surprised that the flag didn't go up. It's a half press from Bar City, Rig and Brunt were trying to put it on, but no one else, and that allows Dulwich to at least advance up to the halfway line, and a good ball over the top from Carew. It's tailored down the right-hand side to you. He's gone in behind, up to the edge of the area. Pulls it back here to Clunis, who disguises over the bar for 18 yards, but that was another very good chance for the Dulwich little wide winger. And there with his centre-back partner, Kundi. Plays it into the feet of Brunt, who lays it off first time to Joe Reigns. Midway inside the Dulwich half. Skips forward into the area. Watkins goes down under pressure. Referee doesn't give anything. Jack Batten down at the moment, holding his ankle. Lee Williams trots on. Bar City physio to have a look at him. Dan Ball sent to warm up. So it will be Bar City appearance number 248 for Dan Ball. Goes short on the edge of the area. Back to Vogue's now. 15 yards out, he's got Reigns for company. He looks to skip past him, does well, though. He's into the area, then checks back onto his right, lays it off, but Rigg does well to read it, get there ahead of Carew, and now maybe a chance for Sean Rigg to break. Looks to play it over the top. Watkins makes a run inside, then gets taken out in the middle by Anthony Cook. Ball finds its way to Stewart, and the referee's not playing any form of advantage. I'm not sure why. As then it's sliced and kept out of play. It's not kept, it's gone for a corner, but... And he walked to the middle and it's pretty cleaned out by Anthony Cook and how both officials missed it, I've no idea. So here comes Stern with the delivery. It's in towards the far post. Brunt batting away, gets his head on it and nods it into the ground. Hind for a got all kick. He's up here and he was held back by Carbo, but did well to get on the end of it, the big striker. Now forward to Watkins. It's poor layoff there by Watkins. Vose can steal in ahead of Morton. It's three on two here if he can pick the right ball. Goes wide to Tomlin inside the area. Tomlin up against Bill, looks to shoot, and it's narrowly wide of Ryan Clark's goal. Big, big chance for Gavin Tomlin to make it 2 0, and he can't take it. It's two minutes added on here at the end of the half, and Bond's gone up 30 seconds early. Not really sure why, but Straker now plays it forward into Mann. 30 yards out. Plays it out to the left hand side to Stewart. Touch then, cuts inside, crosses towards the far post. Bond with the header, oh, he's completely missed. Directed that, Watkins then flicks it in towards the far post, a little bit too much on it. As Rig will deliver it in towards the far post. Cundy gets his head on it, it's nodded away, and then on the follow-up is Stern, and he's trying to get a good save by Edwards through a crowd of bodies, saw it late, and did well to get a strong fist on it. Morton spreads the ball nicely out to Stern on the left-hand side. One last chance maybe in this open 45 City. Crosses in towards the far post. Brunt looking to come in. It's nodded away in front of him by Daniel Papo, but has to put it behind for a corner kick, the Dulwich centre-back. Sean Rigg will take this corner kick. In swinger, it's Edwards has flapped it. He's completely missed it. Loose ball finds a way to Stern, and it's deflected up. It's a great, great block from the Dulwich back line. And in fact, that will be the half-time whistle here, so no chance to take the second corner. 
Carl Grove is still down. I mean, taken that full-blooded, but excellent defending from the Dulwich man because Ross Stewart struck that really well. Knocked against Dan Ball. And here is Naira and Clunas looking to come forward. James Morton has been beaten by him a bit too easily. He finds Gavin Tomlin, who was not offside. He thought he might have been by his reaction. Quade Taylor has to go back to Carew. Will find Carpo in the middle. Still looking to move it here with those. Gets into it towards um, Naira and Clunas. And it goes beyond. And Joe Reigns should get there. There's a couple of calls from behind the goal from fans of Dunwich Hamlet, but... It was certainly Anthony Cook on Joe Reigns that forced him to go down half the other way around. Long goes Ryan Brunt and he's spun him and pulled down to the ground. It will be a free kick to Bath City, about 10 minutes, 10 yards inside the Dulwich half. 40 ish yards from goal. Look to play it in towards the middle. It's gone over the head of Robbie Cundy, but comes all the way through to Riggle. to get back across. And it's Ryan Brunt to score. Bath City a level. It's 1 1. Yeah, really good from Varsity. Poor from a defensive point of view from Dulwich Hamlet. The ball went all the way over to the far post. All the way to the feet of Sean Riggle at a time to bring it down, take a touch. You shouldn't be allowing someone to do that. From a long ball The inquest is currently going on at the back between Carew and Quay Taylor. And Rig, we know he's got quality, he showed it, didn't panic. Picked out Brunton from two yards. Couldn't miss. They finally got that ball into the box right there. And it was... Sean Rigg cuts it on, Ryan Brunt's never going to miss from there. Won't need treatment, fortunately there was no blood coming from his nose. Straight up to play it forward, so a bit of a botch clearance by Carper. It will come for Ryan Brunt, he's looking to get it down, it wouldn't drop quick enough. But it has taken the reflection out for a corner kick to Bath City. Here is Ross Sturm with the corner, looks again to the front post, Danville heads it on, looks to come towards Ross Sturm, but it will be headed away by Magnus Alcarongo. Steps up to it, looks to get it over the wall, and it's cleared the goal out. It wasn't the best free kick from Ashley Curry from the time it seemed to take. And it'll be kicked on by Ryan Clark, who looked to find Ross Stern. He's knocked it off, and it comes to Frankie Artis on the volley. It was a decent attempt as it was just dropping down, but over the top of the bar. Anthony Straker gets it back and to clip it down the line. Carew's having to run back towards Ross Stern. He's just trying to size up his opponent. Looks to get towards the byline. Looks it back across. It comes all the way out. Sean Rigg from the edge of the box. He's hit it into a crowd of bodies. It's deflected away. Here is Afalabi. We can get away from Dan Ball, who does well enough. And Joe Reigns will give it back to Ryan Clark. Ross Ryan Brunt. He's sort of him and Artis haven't quite worked that one out. And he will come back towards Quay Taylor. He's once again gone to the floor. He's, seems to be in a lot of pain. And... I'm not sure Ryan Brunt's too happy about that. He's been pushed away by it from him by Carew. And a bit of a scaffold appears to be going down on the pitch now. Pleading his own point towards Ryan Brunt, who has been booked. Bar City faithful, not too happy with how Jacob Miles has dealt with that, but I don't think he can really complain given Brunt's actions. And Okwange has been booked as well. You can tell Gavin Rose is not satisfied. There's a lot of gesticulation and instructions coming from that Dulwich bench. Adam Mann gets onto the ball. He's away from Papo. And only Okawonge seems to be in the middle. He cuts back on himself. On top of the edge of the box here is Carl Kibble quite squeezed beyond Papo. And the Dulwich Hamlet just about survived. But it's come away. Joe Reigns to get the ball straight back into the front. Ryan Brunt battles with Daniel Papo, but he wins that one. We'll see... Um, Cook get the ball, he's looking to come forward through Nathan Ferguson, but he loses it pretty quickly. It's Frankie Artis looking to come forward for Bath City, he hits Ross Stone in the flank, he wasn't tracked particularly well by Quay Taylor, comes back inside, he's still going, Henry looks to line up a shot and he's smashed the man in the face, but he's given away a free kick for handball. I think that's fair enough, the arm was up, it looked like it hit it, I think the man and the Dulwich man are going to say it was more under the armpit, but you put your arm up in the air like that. He was about 10 yards away from Ross doing Ibrahim Cargo, and you're asking for trouble, and he's lucky he was just outside the area rather than just inside it. It is not short, Ross. It's not short, Sean Reagan. It's hidden to the wall by Ross Stern. He's out of man. Gives it back out to his 
winger Rob Stern looks to play in towards the back post and it's not dealt with particularly well come for Dan Ball who's got his shot looking to get the second attempt Ryan Blunt to run and it's his second goal in his second game this week it's 2-1 to Bar City we can say that nice pass and possession football from both these sides and that's a really really scruffy goal from Bar City they did well kept the ball alive after the corner man originally and then Rostin's cross, it looked like it was looping behind, it was kept in at the back post easily by a Dunwich defender. Down ball had a couple of stabs at it, did well, sliding in to keep it alive. And then Ryan Brunt, six yards out, right place, right time, finishes past Preston Edwards. Glass City, deservedly on this second half performance in front. Dan Ball's dog and determination there really made that goal. He had two shots, he was going to make absolutely sure that he got to that one, and it just fell for Ryan Brunt in front of goal. Ross Stern gets on to it, but he's tackled well by Nathan Ferguson. Clips it down the line towards Akin Yemi. You've got Dan Ball running with him, he looks to get beyond, and it's a good challenge from the Bar City substitute. It'll be a corner kick to Dalek Hamlet. Plus, we left a little bit in. On I was point. wondering if he'd injured more, whether it was himself or the Dalit striker. They both stayed down. Crunching, sliding challenge from Dan Ball and still holding his shoulder, but he's back up. And we'll see if he does knock a one guy and he's kind of realised the corner's coming in. I need to be in the box and maybe he might go down after. This is all finished. He's definitely holding his shoulder at the moment. That one can be awkward. He's looked to play in by Vose, headed away by Sean Rigg. He's flicked one again by Mann, but only to Cook. Cook looking to come forward. He runs into the space where it was pretty well hit. He's Hit forward, Joe Reigns gets the knockdown and plays. Got Nathan Ferguson in midfield as Dunwich Lion recaptures some of their magic from earlier on. And Yakin Yemi, it's another fabulous tackle from Dan Ball. But I fear he might have done something to his shoulder once more. Yeah, he injured it a few minutes ago and he's got another clutch on the same one. And I was wondering whether he's going to continue for He's holding that shoulder for a long time. And I worry he could be in a bit of trouble here with Barty not having any. Well, Matt Richards will have to come on and a bit of a rejig. Matt Richards did immediately go and warm up. I fear he might have dislocated it here because he had two pretty hefty slides on that elbow in relative quick succession. He has tried to play on. Dan Ball back on the pitch, so we'll wait to see whether that's temporary or he is fit to complete the rest of the match. And then it's rolled back to Frankie Artis. He gives it once more back to Anthony Sreko. He's to find a bit more dynamism. Ryan Brunt gets it off. Here's Ross Stern. Plays it for the far side. Adam Mann's got a bit of space to come inside Sanchez Ming. And also is well saved by Preston Edwards. And here's Ibrahim Karko. It's a launch of counter-attack. And towards Nairon Clunas, the goal scorer for Dulwich Hamlet all those minutes ago. Comes inside Robbie Cundy. But it's well blocked by Frankie Hart, who's been absolutely everywhere since coming on for Bath City. Cargbo plays out towards the far side, looks to find Dippo Akinyemi. He's got a bit of space for Anthony Cook if he tries to use him and doesn't. And then once again, it's that man, Frankie Artis, who wins the ball back. It's a clip it down the line, but Quade Taylor gets there before Ryan Brunt. Plays inside to Nathan Ferguson, switches it in. Here's Sanchez Ming looking to come forwards. He's got a bit of space, looks a nip inside and clips it out towards the far side, but no one was making that run. It's out for a bar city throwing. Come here's Cargo can't get past both Morton and Adam Mann. It's Bar City with the ball in a good area. He's got Ryan Brunt outside Sean Riggins, has got it into him. He's looking in towards that left midfield spot, looking to find a yard of space to put the ball across. And does so it's coming towards Adam Mann, but he doesn't have the height on it. He's out for a goal kick to Dulwich Hamlet. Nathan Ferguson has lost the ball to Sean Rigg and Ross Ryan Brunt's just trying to get beyond Papo, but his strength was used well. Here's Anthony Cook, looks to clip long in towards Af Akinyemi. He gets the ball down, looks to turn away from his centre back. He cues it back, Jay May. There's the ball to Ford Nine Clunas, but it's actually a fantastic block from Joe Reigns. And Bar City's goalkeeper can just slow the game down once again. Determination to keep the ball in Bar City's possession. Here's Ryan Brown, he's got Ross Stern ahead of him, looks to flick him beyond Quade Taylor, and he should have the better of the centre-back. Looks to come inside him here, is Ross Stern still on there, look to curl it, and it's a good save by Preston Edwards. John Mills adding a little bit of height and a little bit of legs at the end of this, and Ross Stern's milking every last second out of coming onto the field. John Mills will probably a bit more. He's just wandered onto this near side. Vose looks to start things up quickly. Quay Taylor finds Sanchez Ming. He's got space to run into, but Joe Reigns will close it down as quick as he can. 
He's making sure he can't get beyond Sanchez Ming. His touch was long as a goal kick to Bath City. We were about a minute away from the end at Twerton Park. And Jay May looking to get the ball off. Here is Nathan Ferguson. He's got Anthony Cook outside him who slips up and I think John Mills will take full advantage of that. Here's Sean Rigg, kicks long down the line, and that's it. The wall goes up around Twerton Park. It's Bar City 2. And Dulwich Hamlet 1 is a really gritty victory for Bar City. They've got all three points for the third time in succession at this time at Twerton Park. Your fault, Michael Powell. Yeah, as I was saying, towards the end of the game, I think just about deserved for Bar City. Dulwich Hamlet flew out of the traps in the opening 15, 20 minutes. Nathan Clunas, sorry, Nairon Clunas, deservedly gave them the lead, but they didn't really show too much or enough after that as City regained control. They were on top at the end of the first half, not really creating them much there in the second half. Brian Clark was essentially a passenger. It was all Bar City. Didn't create as many clear-cut chances as they maybe would have hoped, but they did take two of them, courtesy of Ryan Brunton. I think on the balance of the 90 minutes, it deserved a come from behind victory for the Twerton Park outfit. Bath City 2, Dunwich Hamlet 1 here at Twerton Park as Bath City made it three back to back wins for the first time this season as they look to march on towards the playoffs. That is just about it. I've been joking with Michael Powell this afternoon. We'll see you for Bath City's next match. Once again, a big thank you to both of the fans this afternoon. The ladies and gentlemen, eight.